Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meat, and in this Cinema 4D plugin video, we're going to be looking at a plugin called True Split, and uh, that's this here. I'll be putting a link to this in the description of the video, as always, and on my website. Uh, now, I should actually say that I've got a little bit of a hand in this plugin. Uh, the developer sent me a copy of this a while ago and said, What do you think of the name? And at the time, I did think that it was a little bit long winded, so I put forward the name True Split, and they they liked it and uh, I think down down the page somewhere they actually uh, give me a little shout out for naming naming the plugin which is nice anyway let's uh, take a look at what this actually does okay I've got a simple scene set up it's just you know a floor background all that kind of stuff which you can largely ignore we're just uh, going to concentrate on this cube that I've created in the middle here and it's got a few different materials on it and uh, yeah, I mean, it's a pretty simple setup. But what I want to actually show is the differences between the native split tool in Cinema 4D and this plugin. So let's have a look at the native stuff first. If I choose, say, this uh, polygon here, right click and say split, you can see that it's split off this new object. And uh, if I come out of polygon mode and go into object mode again, and select our split off object and move this out you'll see that we've got this new split object which is based on the polygon selection that I made earlier so it it takes that polygon selection and splits it off as a new object but there's a couple of issues with this um, first of all the pivot point is still at the original objects location and there's nothing I can do about that apart from opening up the access tool and uh, you know centering it that way Something else as well, that it leaves behind the original geometry. So it's almost copied copied this polygon and uh, the original polygon remains in the original object, which is um, a little bit annoying, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. Anyway, less about the native tool. I'm going to undo those moves there. Uh, oh yeah, something else. Let's just uh, go forward again. This split object, this uh, object that's been split off, it still has this grey material, this teal material, and this red material. Well, the only material it's actually using is this teal material, but it still has these uh, materials on it and still has the selection sets as well. So, again, that is a waste of everybody's time because this new object is not even using these materials. So, let's rewind and have a look at the uh, true split tool or a plugin, should I say. Now I've actually housed it up here on my UI and uh, you can see there, true split. If you want to do that, you can go to window, customization, customize palettes, and then you can just search for true split and drag it into your uh, UI there. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Uh, you've got the, the main button itself and that just executes the true split plugin. And uh, if you're in object mode like I am, you'll get this warning come up saying, true split error in order to use the plugin you'll need to be in polygon mode and if you press the little cog wheel here you get a load of options so let's reset this to default settings to make sure that we're back to how you guys will see it and let's go through some of these options so with this uh, polygon selected I'm going to open up the true split options and let's have a look at the first one first one is split object as a child now this is checked on at the moment so let's uh, execute that and I can just drag this straight out you can see that we're actually in object mode now. We're not still in polygon mode like the native tool. So I'm going to drag this out. And all that means is that option there, split object as a child, it just makes it a child of the original object. So it's there like that. So uh, let's rewind and undo that. So we're back to our original object. And take this off. And split again. Oh, I've got to be in polygon mode. Split again. And as you can see now, it's not a child because we've uh, we've unticked this option up here. Now, I don't want this as a child of my original object, so I'm going to leave that off. The next one is delete poly selection. What this actually means is that it deletes the original poly that you're splitting from. So if we select that on and run the split again, <laughs> and again, I'm being told to be in polygon mode. I keep forgetting about that. Run it again move my new object out, you see that it deletes the original geometry, which is fantastic because you don't want to have to go back to your original object to delete the polygon. Um, this is much like the function works 
in uh, 3ds max actually when you split an object off it assumes that the reason you're splitting it off is because you no longer want it to be part of the original object so it's great that this plugin actually gives you that option um, so I'm going to keep that on okay so the next option is optimize split object and we can cover the next one as well which is optimize base object now I don't really have to worry about this because I'm in R21 but I should imagine this is for the benefit of older uh, versions of Cinema 4D where if you uh, had a bunch of polygons and you deleted the polygons it would actually leave isolated points floating uh, for example if I create another box here and give it a load of segments let's say 10 by 10 by 10 and let's move it forward slightly like this and make it editable let's make this brush bigger if I do this and delete a load of polys and, and go into point mode, you'll see that there's no floating points there. In older versions of Cinema 4D, um, there would have been points left behind. And I should imagine that is exactly why this uh, optimized split object and optimized base object is, is there. Because if I broke, say, this entire front face off, um, it may leave points behind. That's my assumption anyway. We've also got this center axis to split object. I'm going to turn this off for the time being and actually uh, go here, go back into my polygon mode and this, uh, select this poly and break it off. And this actually mimics what happens in the native split tool. You split this uh, polygon off and its pivot point remains the same as the original object, which can be quite annoying if you want your axis to be centered instead of having to do that yourself the tool does it for you so again I'm gonna rewind this go into this uh, settings center axis to split object and now when we do this oh in polygon mode like a good boy there we go split it off again and now the axis is in the, is in the center of our new split uh, apply color to split object now this is actually already turned on you'll notice that not much has changed here um, again if I go into polygon mode and split our object out this hasn't got a color but if you look down here in the basic tab of our new object you see that it's purple so if this had no material you can see that this is actually being changed now in my case you may want to retain the material on there and this is kind of completely pointless so in this case here for me, I'm going to turn this off because it makes it makes no odds to me. So I'm going to rewind and uh, turn that option off. And now the color of the object, which is this default sort of gray, is not going to be um, changed to something more magnificent. Uh, I can see there being a use for this. If you add no materials on your object yet, it will be uh, helpful to see what's actually been split off. Um, I mean you should know by your poly selection but you might have missed something you might have selected something extra so it's just that little extra little highlight uh, which could help you uh, remove unused materials now this is checked on which is fantastic if this is checked off and this is something that I was talking about earlier with the native tool if I run this split operation now you see that my split cube still has this material and this material even though they're not being used on this object utterly pointless in in this case anyway so if we actually remove unused materials you'll notice that when we split this off <laughs> again in poly mode that it's looked at this polygon and said well the polygons that you've selected what materials are you know actually on these and you can see that it's been evaluated and it said well the red material is not used nor is this gray material we don't need them super useful because it just means that you don't have to go picking through your object later and getting rid of materials that aren't even used on the object which is uh which is great moving on to the next one remove all materials i mean that's pretty self-evident uh, if that's checked on it will just get rid of all materials on the object um, stay in polygon mode you'll notice that so far with this split tool and uh, i think it's actually quite useful in uh, just as a general use because once you've got your split set up the way you want it once you've run it you don't need to be in polygon mode you don't want to have to click off go back into object mode 
all the rest of it, the plugin can do that for you basically. So if I, you know, split this off, I'm already back in object mode. And uh, yeah, I think the poly is still selected, but yeah, I'm already back in object mode. If you do have this option, there we go, ticked on, you'll stay in polygon mode. Instead of it flipping back to object mode, which I prefer personally, you'll stay in polygon mode. Okay, the uh, next thing on the list is split all polys on object. And again, that's quite self-evident. Uh, if you've got this checked on, it will break every single poly on this object into separate polygons. If you want to reset uh, everything that you've messed around with and changed here to the default settings, you can just hit that button and everything's back to its defaults. Here we've got a uh, help section, which is documentation. We've got the link to the Gumroad store and the link to the Discord support as well. So that's really nice. The about section again mentions me in there. Thank you very much. <laughs> and the other nice thing about this is if you go to help in the documentation, the documentation actually opens up in a C4D window, which is super helpful because a lot of plugins actually um, open up in a browser window like this, something like that, which is not super helpful because. Um, a lot of the time you want the help open and then you click back on Cinema 4D and then your browser moves to the back, which is really annoying. So the fact that they've got the help documentation actually in a C4D window that you can, you know, put to one side and still work while you're looking at this stuff is uh, super, super helpful. So that's about it, guys. That's a true split for Cinema 4D. It's a fantastic plugin and I've got, uh, got a feeling that I'm going to be using this a lot. So I just wanted to make you guys aware of this plugin and I'll see you in the next one. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell to be notified of new tutorials. You can follow me on social media at Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and Instagram. And make sure to visit me at digitalmeet.uk where you can vote for upcoming tutorials. Thanks for watching. Bye.